Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and tell my people their transgressions and the house of Yaakov Jacob their sins. Blow ye the trumpets in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of Yahuwah, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is a trumpet. Blow ye the shofar. Amen. Good evening. And I'm very happy and joyous that you have uh, made a decision to tune in tonight. Hallelujah. So that we can continue to talk about uh, Moses, the lawgiver, and what Father's doing with him. Um what father's doing with him at this point. But let me recap a little bit. We know that Moses is a law keeper. We know that father called Moses. We know the story of Moses' life and all the things he went through for father to shape and prepare him for such a time as this. We already know that Jethro, the Ethiopian priest, you know, was instrumental in, in teaching Moses a lot. And so we know father gave Moses the, the commandments, not only in Exodus 20, but he gave him the second set in Deuteronomy 5 because the first set, his children broke all of the commandments, the first set. So Moses threw the, uh, you know, the stones down and he broke them, whatever. So Moses is very important on Father's uh, agenda. And if you were tuning in, then you know that we are reading from the uh, the Hebrew vision of hell and paradise. And we had gone through uh, this, to the sixth day, the first day through the sixth day that is mentioned in Hebrew visions of hell and paradise. And I was reading the seventh day um, to correspond with what we had found in here. And we saw the awesome beauty of all these, these wonderful angels that we can hardly imagine they're so big. Uh, how huge they really are. And I'm trying to see where did I, I left off before. Uh, I'm just going to grab. We had finished reading the uh, seventh day. And Moses asked uh, Metatron, that's in the middle of it, but just bear with me. Who are these? He's talking about the angels and things that he just seen. Uh, in the seventh heaven and he answered these are wrath and anger and God created them the six days let me back up a minute Moses went up to the seventh heaven and he saw an angel of holy of fire and two angels whose names were X these were fastened with two chains of red we know this is we're going to say well this is red two chains of red so you can imagine hallelujah and then it says, and dark fire. And each of them had the length of 500 parasangs. Well, I didn't look to see how long that is. Moses asked Metatron, who are these? And he answered, these are wrath and anger. And Yahuwah created them during the six days of creation that they should fulfill his will. Moses replied, I am a Afraid of these angels and I cannot look on them. Thereupon Metatron embraced Moses, placed him in his bosom and said, O oh Moses, beloved of God, be not frightened nor dread thou art. And Moses was immediately calm. Now I want to I wanna just go to the New Testament just for a moment because it says that that uh, Metatron uh, embraced Moses and placed him in his bosom. Place him in his bosom. Okay. And we know in John, the first chapter, um, it is said that the, the Messiah is in the bosom of the Father to declare who the Father is. So here it is. Um, Moses is in the bosom of Metatron which was identified as Enoch further back. And so this bosom is very important. Remember John, one of the, the, the Tabmidden, 
leaned on the bosom of, of Messiah. So this bosom is so important. And when uh, a baby is, is born and if you're nursing the baby, well, the ba baby's on your breast, but it's like the baby is held up to your bosom, you know, for protection, um, to take care of the baby. And then you're looking at the baby's face and you can, you can watch the baby and you got the baby all in your arms. So if we accepted Messiah and we are in uh, Messiah, then we're in Messiah's bosom. First of all, Messiah comes into our heart. So Messiah's in our bosom. And then John 17 says, you know, then we're in his bosom. And then the scripture says, then he's in the father's bosom. So the kingdom of father, we, we're in the kingdom of father. So here it is here. I'm going to read this scripture again, or this uh, writing. It says, Moses replied, I am afraid of these angels and I cannot look on them. There upon Metatron embraced Moses, placed him in his bosom and said, Oh, Moses, beloved of God, be not frightened, nor dread thou art. And Moses was immediately calm. After this, Moses saw another angel whose countenance was totally different from those of other, the other angels. Uh, for he was ugly and his height of 540 years journey. Well, you see, we can't even live there. I mean, we are blessed if we make it to 70. And we are really blessed if we make it beyond 70. So we can't even imagine 540 years journey. That's, ooh, ooh. That's, that's awesome. And he was girded 40 times around his waist from the sole of the foot unto the head. He was full of fiery eyes. And whosoever looked at him fell down and dread. And you know, in the, in the New Testament, you see, well, anyway, I won't get into that, but there was something with round father's thrones and there was something with a lot of eyes and everything. But I don't want to go into that right now. And Moses asked Metatron, who, who is this? And he asked, him, this is the angel of death who takes the souls of men. And he asked him, where is he now going? And Metatron answered, he goes to take the soul of Job the pious. And Moses said before Yahuwah, a God, may it be thy will, O Yahuwah, my Elohim, my God, and God of my fathers, that thou shouldest not deliver me into the hands of this angel. No! I don't want to be in the hands of this angel either if he's the angel of death. Hallelujah. I don't blame you, Moses. Then, said, then saw he angels standing before Yahuwah, each of them having six wings. With twain wings, they cover their faces so that they might not look upon the Shekinah. With the other twain wings, they cover their feet, for they have the feet of a calf. And with the other twain wings, they fly and praise Yahuwah. The length of each wing is 500 years journey. And the width from one end of the world, hallelujah, to the other. Now, can you grasp that? You can see why when we opened the program we were talking about, not today, but how, uh, how uh, uh, Jacob was praying and he was saying, Father of the cosmos, the cause, and the, I mean, this is big. The, the, the God who made the planets, the God who made the, the, uh, the uh, uh, what is it, the Milky Way with all these stars. He made heaven, earth, and the sea. And Father want us to grasp this. When he says, I protect you, he want us to be visually begin to imagine how huge these angels are. Some of the angels that he has watching us. So that watching over us and protecting us and, 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 and being with us. And, and that's the only way I can do this, this program. Is that Father have an army of angels that is with me everywhere I go. I don't know about you. Because we read back there earlier where, where when Metatron first took, uh, took Moses to the heavens. That there was 15,000 angels on, one, on the right and 15,000 angels on the left. And Metatron and Moses was in the middle there. And so when Father tell you, I will protect you, it's awesome what he is saying. So let me get back to this. And, and uh, let me see, where am I? And Moses, okay, oh, let me back up. Let me repeat the last I just read. And Moses asked Metatron, who is this? 
He answered, this is the angel of death who takes the souls of men. And he asked, where is he going? And Metatron answered, he goes to take the soul of Job the pious. I'm only going back over so we, you can grasp before I interject it. And Moses said before God, May it be thy will, O Yahuwah, my Elohim, and the God of my fathers, that thou shouldest not deliver me into the hands of this angel. Then saw he angels standing before Yahuwah, and those with the, I just said, with the six wings and twain they cover their faces, that they may not look upon the Shalkinah. And I'm repeating this. And with the other twain wings they cover their feet. Doesn't that make you think about Ezekiel? And the angels that was there, you know, and Ezekiel with the different faces. For they have the feet of a calf, and with the other twain wings, they fly and praise Yahuwah. The length of each wing is 500 years' journey, and the width from one end of the world to the other. And Moses asked, who are these? And Metatron answered, these are the holy creatures. And uh, our sages tell us that at the time when Nebuchadnezzar, the impious, said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. The Holy Spirit came forth and said, O impious man, how many are the days of the years of thy life? Three score and ten, or even by reason of strength, four score years, and the distance from each to heaven alone is 500 years. The thickness of the heaven again 500 years. And from the heaven, Rakia, to the heaven, Shekinah, Shekinah, 500 years, and its thickness 500 years, and from Shekinah, looks like Shehakim to Zubal, again 500 years and its thickness, 500 years and from Zubal, so many years, so many years and all of this, and the creatures, and let me pause a minute. You see this very word that we say Satan said when he wanted to be like the most, how he will ascend. You notice in this right up, we say Nebuchadnezzar. Now we have to go back and see, okay, who, who are they really talking about? And then I'm going to skip a bit here. It says creatures are equal to the hole and their ankles are equal to the hole and the wings of the creatures are like the hole and their necks are like the hole, whatever that is, and their heads like the hole and their horns like unto the hole. Where the horns come from? And upon them is the throne of glory, which is equal to the hole. It is like the terrible ice. And there sits the king of kings. You know, we know who the king of kings is. The holy, blessed be he, exalted and high, and thou says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Woe unto thee, O impious man, and woe unto thy soul, for thou shalt be brought down to the uttermost parts of the pit, to the seven regions of hell, to be punished forever and ever. This used the word Nebuchadnezzar. The scripture used uh, something else. All right. Hallelujah. I, I know you have followed me so far. The reason I'm reading this is because, I, again, Father wants our minds to, to uh, allow him, who is in our earthen vessel, to show us things that we haven't even imagined so that we can see and understand even more when he tells you and me, I fill up heaven and earth. And you and I can't even see the end. We can only look up and look where we are. And then the explorers or those with the, with, the, with the telescopes and things, you know, they can see things and they can't find an end of anything. And Father said he fills all this up. So if he fills all this up, your little body, he can fill you up to overflowing. And so, and that's what he does. He, he fills you up with himself. And it's so much of him to go around. There's never a limit to our father to bless you. When he tells you that he's going to bless you, it's like in the earlier write-up, let me go over this, if I could find that again. With all these windows that is mentioned, I think in the very beginning, and for those that may, have, may not have tuned in when I was reading about the windows, I just want to go back to this for a second. Because we're always talking about the windows of heaven. If he would open the windows of heaven, I will, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a, a blessing that you, you won't be able to, no, you won't have a container to be able to hold the blessings. And so what I want to do is read here what it says about the first heaven, backing up a bit, though it has to do with the windows. It says the first heaven to which Moses ascended that corresponds to the first day of the week 
uh, there he saw the water standing in line. Now listen to this. The heaven was full of windows, and at each window stood an angel. And Moses asked Metatron, what are these windows? And Metatron answered, these windows are the window of prayer, the window of request, the window of supplication, the window of crying tears, the window of joy, the window of saturation, the window of famine, the window of poverty, the window of riches, the window of war, the window of peace, the window of pregnancy, the window of birth, the window of the treasures of rain, the window of dew, the window of sin, the window of repentance, the window of smallness, the window of greatness, the window of death, the window of life, the window of disease among men, the window of disease among animals, the window of healing, the window of sickness, the window of health. And Moses saw great things past finding out, yea, marvelous things without number. So I can never just look at uh, the, the windows that Father say, I will pour out blessings. So that apparently is, is one window that I didn't even mention here. So when Father say windows, we don't really know how big is the window he's talking about. Is it a house window? Is it, you know, is it a window or, you know, is it, is it 40 feet wide, the window? Or, or is, it, is it 12 by 12 or whatever? I don't know the length of windows or what you call. But Father is saying he wants us to envision how great he is. Let me see if I can read a little more here. Uh, I'm going to skip around a bit and let me see. Okay. I'm going to try to read a little bit more here. Okay, this is at another time. It say, at that time, a bath cold, K-O-L, came forth from underneath the throne of glory and said, Moses, my servant, are thou afraid of them? It is written, a wise man scales the city of the mighty and bring down the strength of the confidence thereof. Strength means the law, as it is said. God will give strength to his people. That's found in Psalms. God said to Moses, Moses, my servant, thou camest up here and has been worthy of the privilege of seeing all with thy earthly power. And I have made thee ascend seven heavens, and have shown thee my treasures, and I have given thee my law. Now thou shalt be worthy of seeing the two parks I have created in this world, one for the righteous and one for the sinners, paradise and hell. At that hour God sent Gabriel and said unto him, Go with my beloved servant Moses and show him hell. Remember, don't forget that Moses' whole body had to be changed in order for him to be hanging out with the angels. He could not hang out with them in a mortal body. He had to be transformed like Father is doing you. And Moses said to him, I cannot enter hell, that blazing fire. I said to him, Moses, there is a fire which burns more than all the seven hells, and yet when thou wilt tread it with thy feet, it shall not burn thee. Remember, remember uh, uh, the, uh, the three, Daniel and Daniels, Meshach, Meshach, Abednego, and three of those were put in the fire, and the fire didn't even burn them. So you hear what Father is saying here? And Moses said to him, I cannot enter hell, that blazing fire. He said to him, Moses, there is a fire which burns more than all the seven hells. And yet when thou wilt tread it with thy feet, it shall not burn thee. At an hour when Moses entered hell, the fire of hell withdrew for 500 parasangs. The master of hell said to him, Who are you? He answered, I am the son of Amram. The Lord of hell answered, Not, not here is thy place. And Moses said, I came to see the powerful works of Yahuwah. Blessed be he. And Yahuwah said to the Lord of hell, Go and show him how men are in hell. Okay. Immediately he went with Moses. I'm reading from the Hebrew visions of hell and paradise. Immediately he went with Moses like a pupil before his master and entered hell together with him. 
Moses saw their men tortured by the angels of destruction. Some of the sinners were hanged by their eyelids, some by their ears, some by their hands, and others by their tongues. And they cried bitterly. And he saw women hanging by their hair and by their breasts. And in such like ways, all were hanging by chains of fire. And Moses asked the Lord of hell and said, Why are these hanged by their eyes and by their tongues and are so fearfully tortured and so sorely punished? And the master of hell answered, Because they looked with an evil eye at fair women and at married women and at the money of their friends and neighbors and gave false witness against their neighbors. And saw he in hell men hanging by their sexual organs and their hands were tied. And he asked, why do these hang? The Lord answered, because they committed adultery and stole and killed and murdered. He saw the men hanging by their ears and their tongues. And he asked, why are these hanging by their ears and tongues? And he answered, because they neglected the study of the law and talked slander and vain words and empty words. The women were hanging by their hair and breast because they used to uncover their breasts and their hair before the young men and desired them and came thus to sin. Hell cried then with a bitter and loud voice and said to the master of hell, Give me the sinners that I may destroy them. For hell is always hungry, never satisfied, and cried always for the sinners to devour them, but hath no power over the righteous. Now let me pause right here so you can remember. Paul talks about a vision. And Paul said he didn't know whether he was in his body or out of his body, but he saw this vision, right? How about if you go and read Paul's vision? And Paul's vision, this is Paul, Paul saw some of the same things. So as I've been reading some of these different books, the, the Father was given different one of them the same vision of what happens to sinners that really don't know our Father. And so if you say, why are you reading that Hebrew visions of hell and paradise? Just know Paul already seen all of this. And it's in his writing, the vision of Paul. And Paul is in the scripture. Hallelujah. And then Moses went further and saw two sinners hang by their feet and their heads downwards. And they cried by reason of the torch of hell and their bodies were covered with black worms. Each worm 500 parasangs long. And these sinners cry and lament, saying, Woe unto us for the terrible punishment of hell would we die. But they cannot die, as it is said. They long for death, but it, it, is come, it comes not. Imagine that. Longing for That's why we're trying to get people saved before they get out of their bodies. I'm going to read a little bit more, and then I'll just conclude this. Because I hope and pray that, that this is a blessing. You get the good, you, and you get the other part of it. You get what happens you know, that Father changed your body so that he can show you mighty things. But if we don't do what he tells us to do, there's a penalty that we, we have to pay. And you don't want to lose your soul. And he loves you. That's why if you turn this channel, you know, Father is after your soul. And if he already got your soul, he's going to expand the knowledge that he's putting in you and giving you wisdom to know how to handle it. Now, back to the writing. Moses asked the master of hell, what acts have they committed? And he answered, These are those who swore falsely and profaned the Sabbath and despised the learned and persecuted the orphans and gave bad names to their neighbors and bear false witness. Therefore hath God delivered them to these worms to take vengeance on these sinners. And Moses asked, well, What is the name of this place? And he answered, Aluka, as it is said, Aluka hath two daughters. Moses went then to another place, and I'm about to conclude this, there the sinners were lying on their faces, and he saw 2,000 scorpions swarming over them and stinging them and torturing them. And the sinners cried bitterly. Each scorpion was, has 70,000 mouths, and each mouth 70,000 stings, and each sting has 70,000 vesicles, whatever that is, filled with poison and venom. And with these are the sinners imbued, and thus are they tortured, and their eyes are sunk in their sockets for fear and dread. And they'll cry, woe unto us for our sins and for the day of judgment. And I think I need to, because there's more there. I think I need to stop right there. Because the Father has, has blessed us to be able to read, to be able to understand. But we can't read a lot of things unless we have a foundation inside of us of the Word. The Word has to be inside of us so deep that spiritually, 
we fathers of spirit let us know things we should read and things he don't want us to read. And so I pray that all the things that I've been sharing with you, uh, reading from the Hebrew visions of hell and paradise, will encourage you to go and look up Paul's vision and see what Paul said in his vision. And then you see in this write-up, we went to the seventh heaven. And uh, the, uh, Metatron took Moses to seven heavens, and he showed you wh what was on each level that he placed him in. And so, therefore, we know that Moses hung out with Father, and he had visions and all kinds of things that he did. And he became, you know, the lawgiver because that's what Father created him to be. What about you? You have gifts. You have all kinds of things going on with you. And so, therefore, I want to leave you with this word. Father loves you. Father got you. Father justified you. Father called you. Father has a plan and a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. And we're going to conclude this. I'm going to see if I can blow the chauffeur uh, to say, let the chauffeur say, so be it, and that's it, and whatever we want to say, we praise our Heavenly Father for, for what he is doing. I'll blow the chauffeur, I'll wave my banner. Since I haven't waved him in a long time, I think I'll just do this first. I might not get to do it. Just don't wave it because it makes me feel good. Hallelujah. I just thank our Heavenly Father for concluding all of this, and I thank you all for tuning in. And I do hope you all will tune in again next week, and then we'll see what Father is doing uh, in our lives next week. If I can get these things before, these beautiful banners with Father's name on them. Well, by the time, I guess we'll be, all right, let me see if I can do it. Well, here, Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you for giving us your Messiah. And then we're going to do this one two hallelujah three we bless our father we thank him for you now let me see if i can quickly blow this chauffeur and see if it's gonna blow and we'll conclude everything <laughs> hallelujah trying to get this because my hands are uncomfortable here. I'll just put this up here. And I guess it'll be off by the time I get you doing what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Praise you, y'all. Thank you, Heavenly and tell Father, my people their Praise transgressions, and the house of Yaakov, Jacob, their sins. Blow ye the trumpets in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all Hallelujah. the inhabitants Praise of the God. land tremble, for, for the Lord. day of your Lord, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is a trumpet. Blow ye the shofar.